So tipping point. How little things can make a big difference. Marco and Gladwell. The stickiness factors. Blue clues is essentially a show built around the James Earl John effect. Instead of learning new episodes one after another and then repeating them as return later in the season, like every other television show, the Clayton learned the same Blue Clues episode for five straight days, Monday through Friday, before going on, on the next one. As you can imagine, this wasn't the idea that came easily to the Clayton. Uh, Santomero and Anderson had to convince them. It also helped the and the Clayton didn't have the money to produce a full season of Blues Clues shows. I had a pilot in my house, and at the time, My daughter was three and a half. She kept watching it over and over again. And that's to say, I kept track. She's watched it 14 times without any lagging of in situation. When the pilot was taken out into the field for testing, the same thing happened. They showed it five days in a row to a large group of the preschooler and attention and comprehension actually increased over the course of the week. With the exception, the oldest children, the five years old, whose attention fell off at the very end. Like the kids watching James Earl Jones, the children respond to the show in a different way, with which repeat being, becoming more animated and answering more of Steve's questions earlier and earlier. If you think about the world of a preschooler, they are surrounded by a stuff they don't understand things that are novel. So the driving force for a preschooler is not a search for novelty, like it's with older kids. It's a search for understanding and predictability, says Anderson. Every young kid's repetition is really valuable. They damn it. They, when they see a show over and over again, they not only are understanding it better, which is a form of power, but just by predicting what is going to happen. I think they feel a real sense of affirmation and self-watch. The blue clues double their feeling because they also feel like they are participating in something. They feel like they are helping Steve. Of course, kids don't always like repetition. Whatever they are watching has to be complex enough to allow upon repeated exposure for deeper and deeper level of comprehension. At the same time, it can't be so complex that the first time around the battle, the children and the turn them up. In order to strike this balance, blue, blue's clue engaged in much of the same time of research as Sesame Street, but at a far more intense level. Our Sesame Street tests give show only once and after it completed. Blue Clue tests show three times before they go on the air. And while Sesame Street will typically only test the third of each episode, Blue Clues test them all. I accompanied the Blue Clues research team on one of the, their weekly excursions to like to preschoolers. They were led by Alice Wilder, director of research for the show. The lively, a lively dark hired woman so had just finished her doctorate in education in Columbia University. With her were two others, both women in their early 20s. Alison Gibson and Alison Shaman. On the morning that I joined them, they were testing a proposed script at a preschooler in Greenwich Village. The script being tested was about animal behavior. It was essentially a first draft laid out in a picture book that regularly corresponded to the way the actual episode would unfold. Scene by scene on television, the Blues Clue test played the part of Steve and walked the kids through, uh, through the script. 
making a careful note all of the question they answered correctly and the twin those the seem to battle them. And one point, for example, someone sat down with a tow-headed five-year-old named Walker and four and a half-year-old named Anna in a purple and white checked sock, skirt, checked skirt. She began reading from the script. Blue had a favorite animal. Would they help us find out what it was? The kid was watching her closely. She began going through some of the subsidiary puzzles, one by one. She showed them a picture of an uh, antenna. What does an uh, antenna eat? She asked. Walker said, Aunt. Someone turned the page of the picture of the elephant. She pointed his tongue. Watch that. Walker appeared in a trunk. She pointed at the tusk. Do you know what the white things are? Walker looked again. Nostril. She showed them a picture of the bear and came the first blue clue, a little spot, a white and black, Tarted with one of blue's paw print. That's black and white, Anna said. Someone look at the two of them. What animal could blue want to run about? She paused. Anna and Walker uh, looked puzzled. Finally, Walker broke the silence. You had better go to the next clue. The second round of puzzle was better harder. Three was a picture of a bird. The kids were asked what the bird was doing. The answer was singing. And then why it was doing that? They talked about beaver and worms and then came to the second blue clue in iceberg. Anna and Walker were still stumped. When they went to the third round, a long discussion of fish, Shama showed them a picture of a little fish lying in camel plodged at the bottom of the sea, eyeing a big fish. Why is the fish hiding? Someone asked the worker. Because of the giant fish, Anna. Because he will eat him. They, they came to the third blue clue. It was covered and cut out of one of the blue fold print. Someone took the four print and moved toward Walker and Anna, wiggling as she said. What is this doing? She asked. Walker screwed up his face and in concentration. It's working like a human, he said. Is it wiggling like a human? Someone asked. It's weathery, Anna said. Someone went over the clues in order, black and white. Eyes, weathery. There was a forge. Suddenly, Walker's face light up. Lit up. It's a fangin. She was shouting. With the joy of the discovery. A fangin, black and white. It lives on the ice and it weathered. Blue Clues' success as a story of discovery only if the clues are in a proper order. The show has to start out easy to give the viewers confidence and then get progressively harder and harder, challenging the preschoolers more and more, drawing them into the narrative. The first era of puzzle about uh, an director and elephant has to be easier than the set of puzzle about the uh, beaver and worm, which in turn has to be easier than the final set about fish. The layering of the show uh, is what makes it possible for a child to watch the show four and five times. On each successive watching, they must more and more guessing correctly deeper into the program until by the end they can anticipate every answer.